This is Joe Bacella here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to how to predict where a stock is headed and create high probability option strategies. Presenting today is Sandy Chaken, co-founder of Chaken Analytics, along with Josh Midland, head of option strategies here at Chaken Analytics. Throughout this presentation, please submit your questions using the Zoom Q&A window, which you can access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. We will be available throughout the webinar to respond to your questions. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who has registered. Now, a little bit about Sandy Chaikin. With no prior experience, Sandy started investing in 2012 with Chaikin Analytics and built a killer portfolio that outperforms the S&P 500 and most money managers. Sandy presents at NASDAQ and industry conferences on fearless investing. Now, Josh Minlin has spent a decade developing and teaching option strategies to traders of all skill levels. Josh currently hosts a three-part series for Chaken Analytics subscribers involving option strategies that range from simple buying of calls and puts all the way up through spreads and more complex strategies. Now to get us started, here's Sandy Chaken. Joe, thank you. And... Uh... So happy to have everyone here. Welcome, everyone. Josh and I are really excited about presenting our joint uh, presentation together. This is the first joint one we've done, so we're uh, really ready to get, get started and, and really revved up. So uh, you might want to take out a pad and be ready to take some notes because we are going to be talking about some specific strategies and specific stock ideas. Uh, before we get started, let me just was going to read the uh, disclaimer, which says that we are not registered as an investment advisor and, and that all of the uh, topics we discussed tonight are informational only and are not meant to be construed as a recommendation or a buy signal. So the material we are presenting is for educational purposes only and is not a trade advisory service, past results or methodologies do not guarantee future results. Users bear sole responsibility for their own investment research and decisions. Okay, and we got that out of the way. Okay, the problem. Let's start with what is the problem placing, facing most traders and investors today? Well, the S&P has grown an average of almost 10% over the last 20 years, but individuals have only averaged 2.5%. So big difference. And the SPY is up 9% this year, so it is running right with the average. Well, people buy on emotion, not fact. That's the problem with us being humans. We, uh, we're not computers, and we let our emotions get in the way, and sadly that does detract from performance, as you can see by this statistic. So the challenge is, you know, how to predict where a stock is headed, how to take the emotion out of that decision and know when to buy and sell. And I think these are the two biggest challenges that investors face today is really identifying where that stock is headed, up or down, and timing. You know, when do I buy and when do I sell? So that's what Josh and I are going to be covering today. So our promise to you is that you're about to discover how to predict where a stock is headed and how to create high probability options trades, which our in-house option expert, Josh, is going to walk you through. So all of this is so that you can make more money in the stock market and not only contribute to your retirement plan, but also celebrate along the way. And the uh, profits that I've made using Chaken Analytics have funded um, our vacation since I've been investing in 2012. So why over the next hour should you listen uh, to me? Uh, as Josh said, I started investing in 2012 when we launched Jake and Analytics. Uh, prior to that, I had no experience investing in stocks at all. I was strictly in mutual funds. But in 2012, I started investing with uh, eBay and, and, and Yahoo. I put $5,000 into each stock kind of to test the waters, one went up 40%, one went up 60%. So I said, well, you know, I can, this is okay, I can do this. Uh, and then I got into uh, names like Southwest Air, Skyworks. In 2005, 
2015, I found these little known winners. I call them these little hidden gems, American Woodmark and Activision, both up almost 100%. And last year, you know, I was again in triple digit winners. Again, small cap stocks that no one's ever heard of, Senta, Quad Graphics, and NACO. Uh, this year, I've been in also some little known winners as well. Excellus up 58%, Entergis up 35%. These are small cap stocks. And uh, LAM Research, which I'm going to be using extensively as my example today, which is up over 40% uh, year to date. Josh, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, certainly. Uh, pleasure to be on here with Sandy. This, as she mentioned earlier, this is the first time that we've done this together. I'm very excited about it. A little bit about me. Uh, I have extensive experience in both trading and training people on how to trade various assets. We're talking specifically about stocks and options today, uh, but I have been doing this for about a decade. I've, I've learned from Countless uh, experts. I spent some time at Trading Academy where I had the pleasure of being mentored by people just like Mark, people who run option floors and people who are fund managers. And now I have the wonderful experience of being able to learn directly from Mark. Uh, and it's been a wonderful experience. So that's where I came from and how I got here. And I'm happy to be here. And I love working with our subscribers. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, today we're going to pass along some of the stuff that we talk about. Great, Josh. Thanks. We're happy to have you here. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's pause here for a minute. And if you all could tell me, what are the biggest challenges facing you today? You know, what, what gives you pause when you look at a stock that you own and are considering selling it, but don't hit that sell button? Or you look at a stock you'd like to own, but are hesitant to hit that, that buy signal? That buy, uh, buy signal. So if you'll just put into the uh, question and answer window, just tell me some of the things that hold you back. Okay, Wayne says, when to get out. That is always a big one, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about um, today. I see, Carolyn says, too much information. Uh, Anil, Anil also says when to get in and out. Stephanie says no reliable tools, don't feel confident I know enough. I hear that a lot, you know, lack of confidence is, is always a big one. Mike says learning the scope of options trading. Well, we're going to address that today as well. And Michael says no plan. Doesn't have a clear path to uh, how to do this whole financial thing. <laughs> and David says being too greedy. Yeah, that's, that's a problem, isn't it? We all like to make the most possible, and sometimes we're tweaking out that last uh, – several percentage points can be our downfall. Okay, well, that's great. That's, that gives me a lot of uh, information. Oh, Don, I'll just repeat one more. Don's looking for too much confirmation before I will take the trade. Then I end up being late to the trade. Okay, well, all of these things we are going to be addressing uh, as, as in, in the steps that we're going to be going over with you right now. Okay, so these are the three steps that we're going to be covering today. Tools, you know, you got to have some tools that you trust, getting to that education and confidence level where you need to be. You need to know where a stock is headed, and that we call a classic bull if it's headed up, and a classic bear if it's headed down. You need to know how to identify those stocks, and uh, to Don's point, not wait for too much confirmation. You want to know when to buy and sell. You know, that seems to be a lot of people's biggest uh, challenge. Don't know when to get in and when to get out. And you want to, we'll show you how to create high probability option strategies. Okay, so let's go into the first uh, step. You have to have some tr tools that you trust. Well, the tool that we depend on is the Chaikin Power Gauge. It's a stock rating. You can see it. Here, it looks very simple. 
However, it's not simplistic. And this was a rating that Mark created after his almost 50 years on Wall Street. Mark created tools for professional investors his entire career. And they use those tools to make better uh, trading decisions for their clients, trading and investing decisions for their clients. Mark came out of retirement after the 2008-09 meltdown to create tools for individuals like us because he could see there was a huge need as literally billions of dollars left traditional brokerage firms and went into self-managed accounts. The tool that he started with is the Chaken Power Gauge. This took a couple of years for him to develop, but he started with over 200 factors, boiled it down to about 20. So even though the gauge is very simple, there's an awful lot going on underneath the surface. What this does is it cuts through the cl cutter, clutter and gives you a clear direction of where a stock is headed. And it looks at a time frame of three to six months out. So as you can see, the information on the right is the data that pros look at. Uh, and this is what Mark was looking at for, for years on Wall Street, from which he put it all together to come up with a suggestion. But boy, I look at it, there's no, I have no clue what it means. Uh, and I would, uh, I would defy most of you to tell me what it means as well. What he's done is he's taken all of that uh, financial data, complex data, put it into an algorithm. And those, uh, that algorithm then uh, comes out with an overall rating, as you can see on the left, which for the case of uh, applied materials is very bullish. So it simplifies very quickly um, the information, but it's not simplistic by any stretch of the imagination. The 20 factors I referred to are listed out here, and you can also drill down to a power gauge rating on any one of these 20 factors, but they're really rolled up into these four main factors, financials, earnings, technicals, and experts. And I highlight in red the ones that I pretty much depend on. Other than the overall rating, I, I drill down on these three and I like to have them in the bullish camp before I make a buy decision. But other than that, I really go with the overall rating. So why are these important to me? Well, the price to sales compares a company's stock price to its revenue. So it's a real good indicator of the value placed on every dollar of a company's revenue. And if that's bearish, that means this, this stock is, it, can be overpriced. Uh, under expert opinions, this is really our secret sauce. These are, these are factors you're not apt to find elsewhere. But short interest is what the short sellers are doing. And I don't want short sellers shorting a stock that I'm interested in. They're betting on a stock going down and they're considered the smartest guys on Wall Street. So I want that to be bullish, which means they're not shorting the stock if I'm looking to buy it. Insider activity is another really important factor in my opinion because the insiders know more than pretty much anyone what's going on with a certain company. I mean, if you're in your own company, you probably have a pretty good idea of where that company is headed. And insiders only buy, uh, which is, is what this, this factor measures, it's, it, they're buying, they're only buy for one reason, and that's because they think that stock's gonna go up. They could sell for many reasons. You know, they could sell because they need to raise cash to pay a tuition bill or put a down payment down on a house or whatever, but they're only going to buy because they think that stock's going to go up. So I want them buying if I'm going to be buying a stock. I want that to be bullish. Other than that, as I say, I just look at the overall rating for a stock and am satisfied with that. Now, one of our partners, John Carter, is a very well-respected uh, stock market expert, and he calls the power gauge rating an awesome meter for stocks. So he says there's a lot of hyped up tools, tools up, out there, but a single tool that combines 20 fundamental and technical factors to anticipate a stock's profit potential got my attention. Uh, at first glance, I thought this looked like an objective awesome meter for stocks. And he likes that it includes fundamental and technical analysis. And for those of you um, 
wanting a little more information about the power gauge rating, there's an awful lot on our website under the tab for power gauge rating. Uh, but it is 85% uh, fundamental, 15% technical. And it's one of the rare uh, platforms that combines both fundamental and technical analysis. So you've got really everything rolled up into one. Now, going back to that first slide about the performance individuals have, which is 2.5% on average versus uh, the, a the average for the market of 10% over the last 20 years, you know, here's the here here's why you want to depend on models because, as this uh, well-known quant analyst says, models beat humans uh, because they reliably and consistently, I'll underline consistently, apply the same criteria time after time, as opposed to human beings who are swayed by emotions and opinions. So, there's there's really the reason that you want to depend on something other than your own emotions, other than what people are saying on the news or the financial news cycles or you're reading in uh, the financial publications. So a little, um, little more confirmation on the power gauge rating and um, why we feel so strongly about it. Uh, we launched indexes with uh, NASDAQ three years ago based on the power gauge rating. We took their benchmark um, which you can see here was the large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever funds, overlaid the power gauge rating so that it, uh, it filtered out stocks other, that were uh, bearish or neutral and left the fund strictly with uh, bullish power gauge ratings. It's rebalanced once a year, uh, meaning the stocks don't change. It's a fixed portfolio. And as you can see here, the difference between the NASDAQ Chaikin indexes and the benchmark um, are pretty extraordinary. Um, so that got the attention of New York Life's mainstay investment arm, and they have since uh, licensed those, those indexes so that money managers now and their clients can now invest in a portfolio of stocks. They've come out with an ETF based on the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. So we're pretty uh, excited about that accomplishment. Again, we are not registered advisors, so I'm not making any recommendation to um, buy these funds. Strictly, it's confirmation that the Power Gauge rating um, has, a, has a broad acceptance among the pros. Uh, we're also quoted in the media quite a bit, and used by some of the prominent uh, hedge fund managers, as you can see on the screen here. So we get a lot of uh, testimonials from our subscribers. Josh talks to subscribers every day, and they give us a lot of um, personal stories, you know, of, of how they've done. Uh, Norm here recently said that through following your excellent system, his portfolio now stands in excess of a million dollars. Before shaking, he'd make money and then lose it. Consistent earnings, remember consistent uh, was in, in the uh, O'Shaughnessy uh, argument for why you want to depend on the model. Consistent earnings were just not a reality for me, but Chaikin has changed all that. So, you know, again, a, uh, a call out to depend on a disciplined approach that takes the uh, bias and the emotion out of the decision. All right, so we're gonna get into now knowing where a stock is headed and we're breaking this up into two sections. You know, one, when the stock price is rising, which we call a classic bull, and then we'll move on to uh, the classic bear, which is, you know, knowing when a stock is about to head down. So this is um, LAM research. I'm gonna use that as my example of a classic bull. This is a stock that I've owned um, actually multiple times. Um, and I'll walk you through why I decided to buy it and why I decided to sell it. But these are the, these are the basic makeup of a, of a classic bull. You want that power gauge rating to be bullish, green. You certainly want the price to be trending up. And you can see the orange line there is like a 200 day moving average. So it, it, it makes it pretty clear whether it's trending up or trending down. You want the check and money flow to be strong, and I'll explain that. 
and relative performance to be strong, and I'll explain that too. So let's let's look closer at LAM research. Uh, this is a, a slide I, I presented back in March when I presented uh, a webinar, and this was when I first bought, bought this stock. So if you look down at the bottom, you'll see the chicken power gauge ribbon, uh, the straight line there that's mostly green. So the power gauge ribbon, um, going back into March for the past year had been pretty much bullish the whole time. So that's good. That checks one uh, tick mark off on the criteria. The relative strength, which is right, right above it, is the measurement of how this stock is performing relative to the market. And the market is uh, the SPY, the S&P 500, which um, myself and, and many investors use as kind of the benchmark to compare our performance against. So if you're going to be buying a stock, uh, doesn't it make sense that you want that stock to be outperforming the uh, S&P 500? Otherwise, you might as well just put your money into an S&P 500 account and you know, be satisfied with the average uh, increase a year, which, which for the last 20 years has been 10%. That's not bad. But you're not going to achieve, you know, the, the results like, you know, an enter just gives you, which is up 35% this year, or Excellus, which is up 58%, or LAM Research, which is up 40% this year, 41% to be exact. So if you want these, you know, outsized uh, performances, you really have to know how to zero in on identifying a stock and where that stock is headed, as opposed to just buying an index fund. All right, so the, I said that I would explain the check and money flow, which you can see is above the overbought, oversold, and I'll come back to that one in a minute. But let me explain the money flow because this is the indicator that Mark basically made his name on Wall Street uh, on. He created this indicator about 35 years ago, and it's on virtually every uh, stock charting uh, package uh, worldwide. Um, what this does is this measures professional money coming in and out of a stock. So when you see those nice mountainous periods of green, that means that the institutions are buying the stock. When you see red, the institutions are selling the stock. And it's normal, as you see back in the September time frame, for every stock to go through some period where where institutions are selling that's nothing to be alarmed of where you should get alarmed though is you if you see big chunks of red uh when there's, you see a lot of money coming out oh, excuse me one sec um, but as you can see since january uh that money flow has been pretty strong uh institutions have been buying and that typically moves the price upward because as they're buying, they're depleting the inventory and that in itself will, can uh, push up the price. So in order for me to buy a stock, I need all these three things to be lined up. Power gauge rating, relative strength, money flow. And you can see by that green arrow in February, when they all lined up, uh, that's where I bought it at 117. And I bought it with that little green triangle. I'll be pointing these out along the way, but these are buy signals. And why are these important? Well, these are really important because these help you with timing. And I know a number of you stressed timing was your biggest challenge. Uh, these are money flow buy signals. We have six different pairs of money flows, uh, of, I'm sorry, of buy and sell signals. And they trigger when certain criteria is met. So when there's a lot of money at a certain threshold going into a stock, it will trigger uh, this money flow buy signal. So it triggered it. Uh, it was a good time to buy. And how do I know that? By the overbought, oversold indicator. So let's go back to the chart, the third um, line up. You'll see overbought, oversold, and I circled it here. Because as we all know, stocks just, prices don't just go straight up or straight down. I call them zigzagging. They zigzag up, they zigzag down, across, you know, they'll kind of go all over the place. This helps you determine when to buy and when to sell. Because when that 
zigzag is going up, as you see it did here in, Feb in March, February, March, that's a good time to buy. It typically correlates with an uptick in price. When it is going down, like it did here in late February, when it, this, this uh, buy signal triggered, uh, that's a great time to buy it because it's dipping down. You want to buy it when it dips down here. You want to sell it when it spikes up here. And it's as simple as that. So it was dipping down. There was a buy. I, it, you can see that the price pulled back, this nice dip here. A couple of days later, there's this nice buy signal that basically confirmed, but I, I, pretty much, I had already bought the stock a few days earlier. Um, and then I had a nice upward movement. Now I sold it up here at this yellow arrow, and this was about a month later, about five weeks later, I sold it at 127. So that was a nice 9% profit. Now why did I sell that? Well, you can see these uh, white kind of uh, dotted bands here. We call these volatility bands. And I'm a sailor, so um, what this what this does is it keeps you inside the channel from a from a nautical perspective. <laughs> but what it does is it keeps the stock price is is apt to stay within these bands. And when it gets outside these bands, it's unusual, and it's a really great time to take your profit because it's unlikely it's going to stay up that way. Likewise, when it drops below this lower band it's a great opportunity to say, hey, this might be a good time to sell. So that's how I use the bands. Uh, Josh is going to show you how he uses them to determine uh, option strategies. Um, but understand that these bands are really important for kind of framing where a price is apt to go. So just to recap, when I sell, because again, that is one of investors' biggest challenges, is when to sell. There's two scenarios, when to sell, uh, take a profit, like I just did here with uh, LAM Research, the price hit the upper volatility band, and let's go back a sec, it was overbought. Overbought meaning it was zigzagging up, as you can see here, it was above the 70 mark that correlated up here. So. That, again, was the ideal for time to say, hey, you might want to take your profit. So it met two out of those three criteria. The other one uh, on an earnings, I'll, I'll explain in a minute, but that's independent of the other two. All right, so after I sold LAMP Research, it just kept going up. <laughs> I, there just wasn't anything keeping this stock down. So I put it back on my watch list, just waiting again for the right time to buy this. And I rebought it, as you can see, that green arrow, arrow um, around April 17th. Again, you know, it dipped down. I got that nice little dip. It correlated down here to this oversold condition uh, below the 30 mark. Power gauge had remained strong. Relative strength had remained strong. There's a little bit of dip of money not going into it at that particular moment, but uh, that was very short-lived. So I knew they were reporting earnings because we have this earnings overlay, and that's these EPS green here. Green means they exceeded analyst expectations. And I have a five-year chart that, um, that confirms I'll just jump to that. So I can see for the last five years, the stock has exceeded analyst expectations. So what do you think, you know, what conclusion do you think that led me to regarding the, the April uh, earnings, earnings? Do you think they were going to beat or do you think they were going to miss? Well, I mean, obviously, I thought they were going to beat based on their history and based on everything I was looking at on this chart. So I bought it on that dip at 126, the day before they reported earnings, they came out with a really strong report and uh, they spiked up 10% and I sold it three days later. But uh, Josh, I think you might want to just look at the, you know, address the money flow there. I mean, look at that money flow coming in. 
Yeah, this is this is a classic tell uh, right before earnings to see. Look at the size of the money flow and the persistency. How consistently we've seen money flowing into this stock in the quarter that pros pros usually have a good sense of what's likely to happen and you can tell that the institutions were piling into this ahead of earnings which is a little bit of a good tell there now this is a classic setup sandy you did a great job on this this is classic follow the rules and take the money yep follow the rules take the money and but it kept climbing as you can see from this slide at the end of May, it was already up to 150 bucks. I sold it at 140. I was very happy with my profit. But that's the thing, those of you who's, who said you got, you know, you get greedy and you stay with a, price, a stock too long, you're only gonna make a, product, a profit when you sell. So, you know, unless, unless you sell, you're still in the game and you could still lose it. So that's why I take these profits, you know, I take the 10% off and I'm not shy about buying it back, as you can see. And in fact, I bought the stock back a third time. In, uh, when did I buy this? Mid-May. Yeah, you can see again, there was a pullback. You see the pullback here, it dipped down. And there's a buy signal here, money flow buy. And I bought it at 148. Now that's obviously higher than what I sold it at, which was 140, we, about a month before. But with all this green, I was still confident this, this stock still had some room to, to go. So for a third time, no, I'm sorry, fourth time, I bought it here. Uh, and then the yellow arrow is where I got out of it. So you can see it hit its upper volatility band. It started to pull back on Friday, just this past week, with uh, you know the announcement by the Goldman Sachs analysts saying the FANG stocks are overpriced, and that caused kind of a panic with the uh, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Those stocks all pulled back dramatically and kind of brought the whole uh, tech sector with it. So I said, well, I'm not gonna watch this all disappear. So I, I took my profit at 160 and, and sold it. And you know, it's now at close tonight at about 148. So that's quite a, a drop, you know, from, from 160. So I still made an, a nice profit on it. Um, I could have said, well, gee, I think this stock's going to come back and I'll make more, but uh, safer to take, again, take the profit, put it in the bank and move on. So Josh, let me turn this over to you now to show um, the folks how you, how you trade options. Sure, sure. So I, real quick, before we even get into the options, I just want to reiterate what Sandy said, because I do think it's really important. And it's one of the things that I talk to people a lot about, which is having a plan. Sandy has a plan and she has rules. And those rules said, hey, I take profits now. And she did. And that's what you do. And I've never been able to go to McDonald's and try to give them a share of stock and say, no, 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 trust me, it's good. You know, you have to sell it to, to bank your money, right? So, um, <laughs> You know, I think that's all very good. So options, how, how do I do options on this? Well, we came down pretty sharply and pretty far. And so I thought I would take a look at the options today. And we have this, we have this tool on Shaken Analytics, Options Play Tool. It's what you see on the screen here. It's that window overlay that you see. And I use this tool to help me quickly and easily compare and identify the option strategy that I want. I'm, I know what I'm doing in the options market, but I got to tell you, this tool helps me do what I'm doing a lot faster. And for, for those people that don't really know what they're doing in the options market, that's okay. Because two things, one, we have a lot of support here to help you with that. And two, the tool really helps you hone in and get down to what is a good or bad setup. So I went in and I took a look at the options. Um, I took a look at some calls, we're bullish, so we're looking at buying calls, and we're looking at the middle panel there. It says buy one, September 15, 145 call. I took a look at that, uh, and it told me 
what it's going to cost me, what my risk is, what my odds of success are. You see it says POP in the middle of the middle panel there. That's my probability of profit. Now, my probability of profit is better than that because I have some really great tools to help give me a directional edge, and that's the Chaken Analytics platform. But the options market is saying that's what the profit is for just anybody who pops this on and takes a look at it. So I took a look at it, uh, and I have a quick process I go through. I look at the risk, I look at the setup, I look at what I, what I like in terms of a setup, and then I go and I look at the rest, the risk reward. This is also a panel on options play. So if we just move one more slide over, then we can see the risk reward analysis. I don't want to get greedy. So what I do is I use the volatility bands to help me figure out where this stock is going. Just like Sandy uses them as exits, I do the same thing. I like to get in when we're oversold, just like Sandy does. I like to wait for a signal, then pull the trigger, and I look at the upper band for my target. So, uh, Sandy, if you would just go ahead one slide. And you'll see, I picked out a target that I thought was very reasonable and uh, was not me getting greedy and it was right above the upper band uh, there you can see it in the middle there we have a score of it with the one with the score of 80 in the center there uh, now i didn't think that this one quite had the setup i like so i didn't do anything with this today i also didn't get a buy signal so i just sat on my hands but that's okay one of the things that this options play did is it said hey you got a score of 80 that's just so so uh you know maybe there's a better opportunity out there and that's fine go through the process the process will either say yes you do it or no you don't and it takes the emotion out of it and that's the beauty of it so it's a quick and easy and simple way to start setting up option trades with low risk and good rewards all right so I have a couple rules and I talked about them a little bit. Uh, I just want to go over them, reiterate them a little bit for you. I use those signals to help me identify my entry price, just like Sandy does. You, you, you want to know when to get in and when to get out. This is, I talk to subscribers all the time. Every day I talk to subscribers. Uh, we, we, we go over my rules, their rules, and Understanding when to get in and when to get out is a big topic of conversation. I know a lot of you chimed in about that today, and that doesn't shock me. It's always a topic of conversation. So we use the signals to help us identify entries. The volatility bands help us pick our target price without getting greedy, right? What's a reasonable target price? That's what we want. We don't want to get greedy, but we do want to squeeze about as much out of it as we can without being greedy. So it's a balance there, and the volatility bands make it easy for me to do that. Help with the overbought oversold indicators uh, just like sandy said it keeps you it keeps you in that channel as the uh price tax back and forth i believe that's the correct phrase from the i'm not i'm not a boater but i believe that's that's it phrase. all right <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. My, my mom's a boater so i picked up on some of the jargon yes, so you, as, you got it <laughs> so as price tax back and forth what you want to do is you we have a tool to help you understand when we're ticking and when we're tacking, I think I might be stretching it there. Anyway, when to get out, and it makes it objective. And once I have all that, I just go and I look at the option strategy and I make sure that I have good risk reward. So I have low risk, high reward setups. All that checks off, off I go. If it doesn't check off, then I sit on my hands and I look for another opportunity. It makes it nice, easy, simple process. Well, the rules really, really help you, you know, guide you because, as you say, it takes the emotion out. So, and it uh, keeps you consistent, Sandy. I know you 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 touched yes. on the consistency earlier. the The power gauge rating is very consistent. It's the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over again, and that's the beauty of it. And when you have a plan, uh, then like like Sandy does, like I do, you're you have an edge immediately because you're removing the emotions from it. So that's why I have these rules. That's why we have a consistent approach. That's great, Josh, thank you. Absolutely, Sandy. So uh, next you'll see, oh, Torsten. 
So Torsten wrote in and you know, this is Torsten was doing some option strategies just like the one that I showed you. Now he did an AMD call, but he got a 400% return in two weeks. That's, that's not something that's unheard of in the options market. And if you look, he also did a Google put spread. We're going to talk about puts in a little bit. I have a put example for you. Uh, I, I'll show you what that is, but uh, but these are these are uh, option trades that he did with Chaikin Analytics, and he followed the process, and these are the results he got, which is wonderful. So uh, can't wait to talk to Torsten again. Awesome, Sandy, your screener. Okay, all right. So here's my screener. So how do I find stocks like Lamb Research? Well, we have something that we call the screener here on the platform that isn't that sexy uh, or graphically appealing, but it works wonders. Uh, I really rely on the screener and I let the screener really do the research for me. We, we rank 5,000 stocks. So how are you going to take a universe of 5,000 stocks and zero in on, you know, the four or five that you want to focus on as candidates to buy? Um, that could take, hours, months, <laughs> and you still could never get through it, right? So if you want a simple way to do it, you use the screener. And these are the criteria that I plug into the screener. You might want to write these down because uh, Josh gets asked these all the time uh, to reiterate what Sandy's screener criteria was. But it's pretty simple. You want to go at, out, of, out of the universe, you want to uh, plug in the strongest industries. There are 64 industry groups uh, that are that are like defined buckets into which every stock is placed. And there's something like uh, technology, for instance, like household staple, staples, like home furnishings, uh, real estate. And every stock goes into one of those buckets. Well, we rank those buckets, the industries, based on the proportion of power gauge rating stocks that are strong versus weak. So the strongest rise to the top. The screener will only pull the top 20% industry group. So um, I know I'm getting the cream of the crop. I don't even want to consider a stock that's not in one of those stock, the strongest groups because the research again has shown that um, you're much better off. You have a much higher probability of success going with stocks in, in the strongest groups. So that's the first criteria. Then obviously I want a power gauge rating that's going to be bullish. And then remember those three factors that I highlighted on the, uh, the 20 factor power gauge rating chart. I want those all to be strong. And then remember that classic bulls chart that stated uh, it, strong money flow and strong relative strain. So I put those in here too. And then I've been looking uh, primarily for small and mid cap stocks because they've been outperforming. These are what I use to define these kind of hidden gem stocks. Uh, if Josh were to, to do this, he would be more apt to use mid cap and large cap uh, for his options candidates. But these are stocks that I'm looking at, at buying as a swing trader. So I plug each of those criteria in, I hit screen, you know, and then I get a list. The I, list yesterday when I did it looked like this. I think there's what, eight stocks in here. So in literally 30 seconds, I took a, a, a universe of 5,000 stocks and whittled it down to seven candidates that meet my criteria. I, I showed the chart here for the, the top one, Apollo. APO. And you can see by looking at this chart, this looks pretty good, right? I mean, it's been a consistent uh, winner since last August and a really nice trend line. I'm going to let Josh take it here because the, the funny thing is, and we, we honestly didn't know this until today when we were going through this presentation, Josh goes, oh, I own that stock. I do own that stock. <laughs> Josh, why don't you you take it from here and talk about APO? Yeah, it was a, it was a funny moment in our uh, prep uh, today when, when Sandy showed me the results that came up on her screen. I said, oh, 
hey, I've got that. It's a great dividend stock. It's a wonderful dividend stock. And look at, look at the chart. This exhibits the classic bull characteristics. What, did, what has Sandy been telling you about what we want to look for? Strong industry up in the right-hand corner tells you right there. Power gauge at the bottom and the relative strength, both bullish. Uh, you can see as it uh, tacks back and forth along with the overbought oversold indicator. And check out the money flow. Look, look at the institutional interest in this stock. It has been pretty consistent uh, for, well, ever since the power cage really went bullish back in August. Now, I wasn't back in in August. You'll see that there is a buy signal in early April, uh, and I got in right around there, right at about 22 bucks. And, and then what do I do uh, is I turn around and I'll sell covered calls against that. So this is a nice long position that I have for the long term, pays a great dividend, is a classic bullish stock in a really strong industry. And I can then turn around and without getting too greedy, sell some covered calls against it in order to bring in a little bit extra, a little squeeze a little more out of it. But it was, it was really interesting when Sandy pulled up the slide and I said, hey, I like that one on top. <laughs> I know, that's a good, great example, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm considering buying this stock, but um, do you think I would buy this now? You know, maybe you can all put into your chat boxes. If is this a stock you would buy now, or um, would you wait? Maybe if you could put into that Q and A box what you think I should do. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, guys, that's good. You get it. Fantastic. Yeah. And S Steven said close to buy. Yeah, it is close to buy. It's almost down there. I'm going to wait for it to get to that 30 mark, which could be just a matter of a couple of days. So probably early next week, if everyone's everything is still lined up beautifully, uh, this could very well be a stock that I buy. And it's pretty much that simple. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it, right? So time, I mean, who has enough time to do what you want to do during the day? Well, certainly not me. And uh, Cheryl gave us this uh, testimony actually before the screener went into place, but the screener is now such an enormous time saver. I'm kind of uh, putting, it, putting her testimonial next to that, but she says there's not enough time to do the work Jacob puts before her in minutes. And uh, that is really true. Uh, it saves me an enormous amount of time. All right, Josh, I'm going to let you go through the classic bear and the scenario here. I like to use examples from my own um, portfolio, you know, as I did with Lamb Research, but I don't, I, once a, I don't own a stock when it's bearish. I, I'm out when power gauge is neutral and other things are breaking down. So, I can't speak to this from experience, so I'm going to let you you take it here and and explain the classic bear. Sure, sure, classic bear, and nor and nor should you if you uh, have a portfolio where you own stocks and you're not shorting and you're not looking for stocks to go down, then you shouldn't have any of these in your portfolio. This is exactly what Sandy tries to avoid having in her portfolio and is out before it even looks like this. Now, myself, I do play the downside. I will play uh, downward moves in stocks using the options market. So this is what I look for. I look for these classic bears. What makes a classic bear? Well, first and foremost, we have a bearish power gauge rating. That tells me that the odds are this is going to go lower over the next three to six months. The second thing I look for is a falling price trend. There's a nice gold line going across that chart. It's a long-term trend line, and I use that to help me understand the likely future direction of the stock. This trend line you can see pointing down, sloped nice steadily down. Then relative performance weak. Just like Sandy mentioned earlier, you want strong relative performance when you're looking at buying. If you're looking at shorting or getting a put or playing the downside, you want weak relative performance. You want something that is underperforming the S&P 500, that's lagging it, that's doing less than the average. The S&P is an average. So we want stuff that is below average, things that the market doesn't really like. And then finally, 
money flow week. Now, just like in bullish stocks, occasionally you'll get little spots of red. In bearish spots, in bearish stocks, occasionally you'll get little spots of green. But if you see on the money flow, it is pretty consistently red. Institutions are taking their money out of these stocks. They're selling, they're pulling money out of it. And if the institutions are pulling the money out of it, you don't want to be pouring yours into it. So this is what we look for in a classic bearish stock. So Hertz, and you can see right here, Hertz was uh, kind of chugging along sideways. It had a little flash of bullishness and it was neutral for a while. And then boom, bearish. And what direction did the stock then start to go? Started to go lower. Confirmed following that with the uh, relative strength flipped. And you can see the money flow is just atrocious on this. It is absolutely terrible the whole way, including, including recently, the last few days, we've had rises on negative money flow. That's a tell. That's something I use as a tell rising prices, negative money flow is a nice little tell. So uh, on this, you can see there are a couple of sell signals. I did not get a chance to look at the options market in those moments, so I don't have a picture of the options, but the way that I would look at this and construct this is we'd look at where the sell signals are, we'd look at where the opposite band is. Remember, that's gonna be where we're gonna put our target, that's a reasonable target. And then we're gonna pick out the option strategy that meets what we're trying to do. In this case, uh, a put, buying a put would be a great way to play the downside on a stock like, like this. This is what we would call a classic bear. All right, very, very bearish stock. Now, let's review my option rules because I'm gonna show you a trade that I took today in going over uh, going through these and looking for examples for everybody tonight, I happen to find a good one. So again, I use the signals to identify my entry price. When am I going to get in? A lot of people are talking about how do I get, when do I get in, when do I get out? These rules help me, makes it easy. My emotions don't tell me, these rules tell me. So use signals to identify my entry price, then use those volatility bands to help me pick my target price. This way I don't get greedy, but I still get the money that I expected to be able to make. Finally, I want to use the overbought, oversold indicators to help me. They tell me when I'm likely to be uh, attacking the other direction. Which way are we likely to turn next? Are we, are we likely close to the top? Are we likely close to the bottom? Overbought, oversold can help you time those exits. And then finally, we only want to pick options that have good risk reward strategy and odds of success. So I want good odds of success and good risk reward strategy. So let's look at uh, Apache Corp. I found this today, and I found this using one of our hot lists. We have curated hot lists uh, that are automatically populated for you. So I went and I took a look at our classic bear hot list. Uh, pretty easy, pretty quick, saved me a ton of time. And then I looked at the signals. Which one of these classic bears had a signal that popped up in the last day or two? Ah, this one had one that popped up today. So what did I do? I went into the options market. I opened up our options play feature and I went in and I identified July put. Uh, I like to personally go a little bit in the money for those of you options traders out there on my debit trades. I like to go in the money, higher Delta. Uh, so, and I looked out a little bit in time uh, and I thought, this is great. We are just tagging the 70 on over, over bought, over sold. We have a nice signal coming up. This is a classic bear. Look at the money flow on this thing. Look at the, the power gauge is terrible. Uh, the relative strength is terrible. This is a classic bear. So I look for a target. The lower band was at about $45, 40, 44 and change, 45 bucks, I think. So I looked a little bit below that because I expect the bands to keep falling. So I usually go just slightly below that and that's my target. So then I said, okay, this looks pretty good. It meets my entry criteria. Let's make sure that it has the right risk reward. So if you go to the next slide, and this is all on options play. So I didn't have to do any of the work. I didn't have to calculate any of this. I just 
plugged in what I was looking for and it did all the calculations for me. It saves me a ton of time as an options trader. I don't want to have to add up where's my break even all that tells me so I can tell exactly where I'm at and exactly what I'm likely to make in the amount of time I expect to be in there. So if you look down the middle column, the middle column, the July 28, 49 put, so a bearish play, we're going to be buying a put. We have a limited risk, right? So a set risk. And then we have really good reward. I expect on this to make one to one. That's pretty good. Now I may not get there. Something may change and I get out earlier. I might be able to squeeze a little more out of it, but that's a heck of a target to shoot for. And it's a reasonable one. And uh, options play helps this uh, put it all together so I can understand if it's a good trade. Two other points I want to make. One, the score on this. The last score was an 80. The score on this was a 99, which is a much better score. So I like that. Options play agreed with me. And finally, in the upper right-hand corner, industry. Apache is in an industry group ranked 60 out of 64. It's third or it's fourth from the bottom. So it's in the bottom 10% of industry groups. If I'm going to take a position where I think something's going to go lower, I want it to be in a terrible industry group. Pretty much the opposite of what Sandy's looking for. She wants things to be in a great industry group because she's looking for them to go up. In this case, if you're doing a bearish uh, trade, you want a terrible industry group. And, and this one is just about as terrible as it gets. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the headlines with oil down and everything. So I thought this was a great trade. So I took it. I took this trade uh, today. Uh, so we'll see how it goes, but I'm pretty confident and very happy about it. I'm excited. Josh, right. that's great. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I wanted to, I know that you were using examples that, that, that you're familiar with and talked about, and I thought I can do that. I've got those. Can so. put, your, put your money where your mouth is, right? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And even better than where my money, where my mouth is, I'm putting my money where I have confidence that it's going to turn into more money. Yeah, that's great. So, Great. Uh, here's a, a email we got in from Norm. This is uh, typical. This is a classic subscriber. And Norm said that we had tremendous service and excellent methodologies. Uh, and now he has a portfolio that's in excess of a million dollars. Before Chaken Analytics, he was consistently losing. Consistently losing. Chaken Analytics follows simple process, simple process to profits. And, uh, and that's what we had with Norm. So, and this is, this is a classic subscriber. So Sandy, why don't you talk about the signals? We've mentioned a lot of them today. Why don't you uh, talk about the signals that we, we have here? All right, great. As, you, as you've seen, Josh and I have been pointing out, pointing out the six pairs of buy and sell signals, uh, which are indicated by these little green or red uh, triangles on the chart. So, I don't think I need to go any more in depth on, on those other than to say, you know, we have them and they trigger when certain criteria are met. And the overbought oversold indicator that you see on the right, we've also been uh, highlighting that so that you want to expect the stock to go down uh, and, and buy it when it's, uh, when it's dipping down and you want to sell it when it's rising at the top, which will correlate to a, a spike in the price. So how do you find these signals? Uh, you can't go through chart by chart just looking, you know, hoping that one has a signal on it. So what we've done is we do what we call it an alerts view. And this little bell up here you see um, underneath every list I have my watch, my, my watch list, which are the stocks I'm considering buying. And I also have a second uh, list called my stocks, which are the stocks that I own. And I go through these every day with the overlay um, of, the, of the alert view, which you see here is this little bell. So when I overlaid it this morning on my watch list, you can see the signals here um, that trigger. So this really helps identify important moves or uh, alerts in, in a stock that I'm watching or own that may affect the price. So if I'm considering getting in, I want to get in on one of these signals. And now might be a good time if everything else is lined up correctly to buy when a stock, for instance, like DHI has a money flow buy. 
So that's how I use it. It really um, zeroes in. Uh, it's like my rule, you know, and when I buy, I like to buy when a, a, a buy signal has been triggered. So knowing when to sell, you know, this is, this is always a big one too, you know, when to get out, you know, when to know to take that profit or when to know when a stock is breaking down and you better get out before the going gets worse. But we talked about uh, LAM research quite a bit on when I took the profit, which I've taken now, what, three or four different times with that particular stock. Uh, the case could be the price hits that upper volatility band, that, you know, that channel band that, that I, both Josh and I have referred to, the price is overbought, which means, you know, that overbought, oversell is, is spiking up, or after a strong earnings report, uh, which indeed happened with LAM research as well. When I bought it right before earnings, it spiked up, I took my profit, because what likely happens is they tend to pull back after they report earnings. So this was the example I used earlier on under the bullish section of taking profit. You know, the first time I bought this stock back in February and I sold it a month later up here, do you see it went above that volatility band? So I said, boy, this is a great time to take a profit. And that's exactly what I did. The breakdown um, is, a, is, has, has, is rule-based as well. And this really takes the emotion out. Uh, but Josh, I'm gonna let you take over here. Sure. Uh, so when to sell on a breakdown, uh, we look for changes in characteristics of the things that we look for to get in. So we have a power gauge that was bullish and then it goes neutral or turns negative. Uh, it, or you get a shake in sell signal. So just like we have the buy signals, we have sell signals. We have the long trend, long term trend line, the orange line, which is our proprietary long term trend line. Uh, if if we go below that, that's a good signal to 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 get out, look out below. And if price drops below the lower volatility band uh, and closes below there, that's not a good sign either. And so these are things to look for when you have a long position and things start to change. You want to know when to get out. You don't want to ride it all the way down. So, you, you know, this is we, we look for these things. So today we were, uh, we were again, as, as Sandy and I were going over one of um, my boss, actually Nick, was in the meeting with us, and we were talking about examples, and Nick chimed in and said, oh, use Verizon, because, well, he had some experience with it. And then I was the one that luckily got tasked with explaining to uh, you all why Nick should have been out of Verizon back in August. Now, Nick didn't join us until recently, so he didn't have shaking analytics. He's probably kicking himself over that, and hopefully I won't get kicked over my comments tonight. But <laughs> no, <you> uh, won't. <laughs> <laughs> I was real pleased when they said, oh, breakdown, Nick, this is, this is an example. Hey, Josh, why don't you talk about this? <laughs> sure thing, boss. So, all right, but all joking aside, it's, it's, it's easy to tell, it's rule-based. So you see the green line in the bottom shows you where the power gauge flipped and the relative strength flipped. That's a clear indication that we're seeing a breakdown occur and that a breakdown is coming. That's, that's about as clear as it gets. You get a, a deterioration of both the power gauge and the relative strength. And if you look straight up, I, I marked off the point where those things happened on price with the yellow arrow, all right? That would have been the indication of, hey, probably time to get out. Now, had you not, you would have had one more really good opportunity and that's the next time it was overbought uh, and that would have been after the drop but if you were watching shaking analytics if if my boss had shaken analytics back back when i did back in august he would have known like i know or knew that verizon was likely to see a prolonged stretch lower and would have been a good time to get out so that's one of the ways we can tell. And you can see just after the power gauge changed and the relative strength changed, the long-term trend line flattened and started to roll over. Look at what price did. It crossed through that long-term trend line and then it was downhill from there. So one of the biggest things that I talk to people about is not taking big losses. 
cutting your losses, understanding when to get out. So you're not just sitting on something, you know, and are so deep in the red that you feel you can't get out. You feel like you're stuck, right? The way to avoid that is to not be in that situation in the first place and to look for these breakdowns and the platform paints you a clear picture of when that is likely to happen. So this is a, a good example in Verizon and, um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I think the, the, the red and green speak for themselves, right? It's, it's very clear and it lines yeah. up and I see this all the time. I can't tell you how many charts I look at a day and go over with folks, go over with subscribers all the time over the phone. I'm talking to subscribers every day and you know, sometimes you see these patterns happen. And so I, I talk to them about recognizing, learning to recognize this pattern. And it's not that difficult. The colors change, right? It's like red light, green light almost. So. Yeah, particularly here in August, you know, when you've got a red power gauge underperforming uh, the S&P and you've got money coming out of it, that would, that, and it's below the trend line and it's bumping into that lower volatility band. I mean, those are all like crying signals yeah. to you, you know, get out of this stock. Screaming. They're screaming. screaming and crying. They're not just crying. They're not just sobbing softly in the corner. They're screaming at you and crying. Hey, time to exit, time to get out. This thing's going lower. So it saves, save you a lot of pain riding the stock all the way down here to what was this about 40, 45 or so. Yeah. And now it's back down there again. So didn't, yeah, anyway. So yes. So we have a clear, easy way to understand when to get out. Now, Anil, Anil, uh, I actually spoke to Anil a few weeks back. Anil, uh, had Sandy actually spoke to his group. And after Sandy had spoken to his group, he went and applied, uh, followed her rules. And then in a couple of weeks later, he sent us this email. He said, hey, I made 23% in less than three weeks. I know people that would love that in an entire year. And he did it in three weeks. Uh, he just followed the rules. And that's, it's, it's that simple. Follow the rules. Follow the rules, stick to the rules. I usually get hurt the most when I stray from my rules. That is when I find that I had the least amount of success. So stick to the rules and Anil, I should be talking to him again soon too. I think we have a call. <laughs> so I went back to him after, after a few weeks, I said, so how's the uh, test portfolio going out? And that's when he sent these additional ones, this 17%, uh, 15% and 15% profits that he'd subsequently made after EME. So uh, we're not, you know, it's not just Josh and I saying, you should follow the rules. I mean, people really are following them and they do help. Now, obviously they don't work all the time, but I'd say 70, at least 70% of the time, um, I'm going in the right direction. That's my experience as well. Okay, so let's recap now. Uh, we've talked about three steps to invest profitably using tools you trust. Uh, for that, us, that's, uh, that's the power gauge rating, the Jacob power gauge rating. Know where a stock is headed. That's how to identify that classic bull and classic bear setup. And knowing when to buy and sell, uh, which are using the, the signals, the buy-sell signals in conjunction with the overbought, oversold indicators. So in the beginning, we made a promise to you and we said that we would show you how to predict where a stock is headed and how to create high probability option strategies. And I, I hope you'll agree that we've delivered on that promise. And this is all so you can make more money in the stock market with less risk. And risk, I do stress because there is always risk. You can't, you can't expect every trade to be a profitable trade, no matter what system you're using or what experience you have. So the, the, the secret is how can you minimize that, as Josh said, and get out before it really tanks. And that's so you could put money into your retirement plan as well as have a little bit of fun along the way with, uh, with planning some vacations as you've seen uh, how Mark and I have spent some of this money. So another uh, testimonial from a, st a stock market expert, um, John Molden, he uh, has a huge community, uh, over a million uh, subscribers to his, his daily newsletters. And he says his analysts are enthusiastic users of Chaikin and they use it to analyze the trades and recommendations of their writing team, giving them feedback and insight into their own ideas. So when they talk about a stock, they've already uh, checked it out 
on the power gauge rating and on Jenkins Analytics before they they write about it. So he says Mark's system has been integrated into our routine due diligence process for vetting and evaluating potential investment. So, you know, we value John's uh, opinion very highly since he is so well known in the industry and well respected. So what we've been showing you are the desktop charts from Chaikin Analytics. It also comes on iPads, so when you're on the go, you can check your stocks as well. But the charts we've been showing you are all from the desktop. We've just recently, a couple of weeks ago, been awarded the best trading stock idea platform, which is pretty cool, uh, by Benzaga. We were selected out of a universe of 18 contestants and uh, we're really happy. Uh, Mark and Nick, uh, some from our, our marketing team went up to New York and, and were surprised you know, when they announced this award. So that was pretty cool. So there's a number of things in addition to the platform, some of which we've had a chance to show you like the screener and the options play. Um, some we haven't had time this evening to show you. Uh, like the on the right, the discovery engine. Uh, this is something that when you subscribe, will take you through this. We go through, we put a lot of emphasis on training and education. And when you subscribe, you'll immediately go into a, a small like w coaching session as early as tomorrow, where you'll learn how to set up your list, how to read those signals, how to overlay the alerts view so you can find the signals you know, and how to use this discovery engine where you can seed the uh, engine with a particular stock and it'll show you stocks like it. Uh, it's kind of like a Pandora, we call it Pandora for stocks, or it's like Netflix. So uh, typically we sell the uh, one year subscription for $1,950, we're gonna take $200 off um, as a special price for the webinar registrants but uh, stay with us, we're gonna make it a little bit sweeter um, so, and give you a deal you really can't refuse. <laughs> so in addition, um, you know, things that we just didn't have time to get into today, but we have a one, you know, you can, you can watch the price uh, during the day if you're, you know, buying or selling that day, it can really be helpful. You can know when a stock is reporting earnings and see the historical pattern as we showed you. And one thing that we didn't have time to talk about uh, is, is the Chaikin Market Insights, which is a weekly report, weekly market commentary Mark puts out every Sunday night that is really uh, the Bible for many of our subscribers, including myself, because he gives a great overview of what he's seen this past week, what he anticipates in this coming week, and always gives some specific uh, stock ideas. So for instance, this last week, you know, with the quote tech rec on, on Friday, you know, Mark gave us really good sound advice what to do uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks. So these uh, insights are really helpful as well as our chief market strategist puts out a daily uh, email during uh, the trading days, Monday through Friday, again, with specific stock ideas. So we really uh, invest a lot with our subscribers to get them educated and to give them as much guidance as possible. Now, what I've outlined here are the one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you can actually set up a one-on-one -on -one call with Joe or Josh or someone else on our team to go over specific ways you can use the platform to coincide with your investing uh, or trading style. And I'm really not aware of another financial service company that you can actually call someone on the phone and set up a phone interview and have one-on-one -on -one tutorial at no extra cost. So we're pretty proud of that because we, you know, our, our success is based on your success. We really want our subscribers to be successful. So I said I was gonna make the pot a little bit sweeter. We're taking an additional hundred dollars off when you take action and subscribe by midnight tonight. Um, so no extra charges, no data fee, free coaching classes. You'll be up and running as early as tomorrow 
when you get on to tomorrow's, we call them onboard sessions. And um, Josh, do you have anything additional to say? Or are we? Uh... Well, I'll just stress a little bit more about those small groups that you were talking about, because I do okay. think, well, one, I, I lead some of them, so not to toot my own horn, but I think they're very, very valuable and very helpful. As Sandy said, we could have you up on an onboard session tomorrow. We could have you on a one-on-one -on -one coaching call next week. Uh, we have regular group, small group sessions that we do out do throughout the week. We do them live and we archive them so that you can see them. We've got a lot of support available to you in order to get you up and running as fast and efficiently as possible on the platform. And I don't know of anywhere else, Sandy's absolutely right, I don't know of anywhere else that has the, uh, the level of support. And I must say the talent working with the team, Joe and everybody else on the team that uh, they've assembled here. So it's really impressive. But that's, that's all I've got, Sandy. Okay, that's great, Joe. Well, thank you all again for taking time out of your busy schedules. We, we know how uh, time starved we all are and appreciate your participation and attendance tonight. And Joe, I'll turn it over to you to uh, close it up. All right, great. Um, all right, so Josh and Sandy, thank you so much uh, for your time this uh, this evening. Um, again, Sandy and Josh, their offer is 1650 for a full year to check in analytics. Um, to make it a little bit easier, I chatted out the link uh, right to the uh, shortcut, uh, checkinanalytics.com forward slash stocks, or you can reach us at 877-978-6257. Uh, we are available. I know there were a few questions for, uh, for some individual stocks to take a look at. Um, I saw AMAT was one of those stocks requests that our support team is sticking around a little bit later today. Um, so make sure to give us a call. We'll be happy to do a live demo with you. Um, but as Josh mentioned, uh, we have a great support program here. We have one more webinar that we're hosting this week. That is the onboard session. This is great for new subscribers, people who are really trying to nail down a routine um, for your approach to the market, whether you're buying and holding or trading options, swing trading. There were a lot of questions about exit points as well. Um, we're going to cover those all, make sure we get you started and uh, hit the ground running. So we would love to have you take advantage, not just of uh, Josh and, and uh, Sandy's offer here, $16.50 for a full year to check and analytics, but we also want to get you in the door and have you attend the onboard session tomorrow afternoon. Um, so uh, with that said, we want to thank you all very much for coming out. Have a wonderful evening. Um, again, checkinanalytics.com forward slash stocks, 877-978-6257. Uh, In the meantime, have a great evening and we'll see you next time.